a committee of inquiry. Mr. Leung has asked uh, for a committee of inquiry to consider the conduct of police and AGC in relation to Ms. Liani's case. I assume his concern is whether there was any undue influence by or on behalf of the Lews on police or AGC in this matter. So committee of inquiries under section nine of the Inquiries Act, it sets out the list of purposes for which a committee of inquiry may be appointed. Uh, accidents involving death, serious injuries, serious property damage, incidents that may endanger public safety or public health, conduct of a ministry, department, statutory body, falling under the responsibility of the minister, conduct of any officer employed by such ministry, department, or statutory body. I think it will be clear to Mr. Leong, if he had looked at section nine, that I don't have the power to appoint a committee of inquiry in respect of AGC, because it is not an agency that reports to me. Now that I've shown the member this, I think he will acknowledge his request is legally not doable. Uh, let me make a set of broader points. If member really wants another inquiry into this matter, then what will be necessary is a commission of inquiry, not a committee of inquiry. That is very high level, headed by a Supreme Court judge or someone qualified to be a Supreme Court judge. I am prepared to recommend to cabinet that we have a commission of inquiry. But members should first tell us what he wants this Commission of Inquiry to look into. And he should confirm that he will come to the Commission of Inquiry and state his position. I say this for the following reasons. The officers involved, both AGC and police, have confirmed categorically no improper pressure. This Liani case was dealt with as a routine case. I have set out the facts, what has happened, it shows clearly there was a good prima facie case to proceed. There is also the disciplinary tribunal which will inquire into the complaint against the AGC officers. Thus, before we have a commission of inquiry, which is a serious matter, will take up resources, lots of time, more and more work. Members should specify what part of this matter continues to reasonably make him believe and question that undue influence was used by the Lews what exactly by reference to what the police did and what AGC did. I would like him to tell us, sir, before I carry on. Mr. Leong. Um. To answer the minister, okay, first of all, um, I'm aware there's a difference between committee of inquiry and commission of inquiry. The reason I once, why I raised the question is actually to try to first establish a principle. Do we all agree that there's a need to have an independent inquiry into this case? Secondly, as to why I think it is still important to have an in independent inquiry is that the more I heard or listened to the animated presentation and speech or statement by the minister, the more I found that there are a lot of information regarding the case that could be further investigated and further interpreted and come up with a more informed judgment uh, of the whole situation. Of course, the minister had uh, uh, provided a lot uh, more information today, which I fully appreciated. I didn't have those uh, information when I raised uh, this question and proposition. But still, after listening to the minister, I think that there's a need, still a need to have an independent inquiry. And as to what form it takes, I think uh, um, the minister has explained, maybe we have to go to the level of the commission of inquiry. Okay. So I think Singaporeans are expecting that we do further um, uh, investigation into this case uh, not just about the inference of uh, the inference peddling, also about the systemic aspect of the whole criminal justice system that maybe we need to look at various aspects, which actually the minister have enlightened us uh, tremendously today, okay, on the, 
on the, for example, uh, the, the evidence uh, 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 gathering contempt and, and also the, uh, when the court refers to the thing, it's like, uh, I, I'm not a lawyer uh, by legal training, but I, I, I was told by lawyers that it could be called evidence uh, contamination and all those things. So, and then also about how the AGC had made the decision and also about uh, the, the, uh, the need to, uh, uh, whether there's a need to have a public defender office and all that. So all these things I thought is, is very enlightening, but I think it requires more discussion so that we can come up with a better system. It is not just the inference patterning that we are talking about here. I hope that answers the question, Minister. Thank you, Speaker. Right. I mean, first, let's settle this. I don't understand why, if you knew that difference between committee of inquiry and commission of inquiry, you have asked me to do something that's not possible. Doesn't make any sense. But let's move on. Uh, all I want to know, public defender's office, for example, the commission of inquiry will have nothing to do with that. It's a policy statement. So, Mr. Leong, can I ask you, Commission of Inquiry is a serious business. We are not shying away from it. I am prepared to recommend it. That's not the issue. But as a, it's not a question of making some broad and vague statements. You are a representative of the people. We take it seriously. This is serious business. It's not a question of saying, I'm not a lawyer. Lawyers say something about condemnation of evidence. I have set out in the House what has happened. I would expect you to be able to tell me, based on what you have heard, which part leaves you concerned with either the influence peddling issue or any other issue. I mean, what? We have a commission of inquiry on the entire law, legal police, and enforcement system? Is that even imaginable? So can we please have some clarity on what is it that concerns you? What aspect? I assume you have read the judgment. I assume you have read the key material. I assume you knew that there was something specific or a set of specific issues that you want to focus on, which is why you asked. So what are those issues? What is it that you want the Commission of Inquiry to look into, which has gone wrong? Is it the translation issue? I've told you what happened with the translation. Is it the fact that they took five weeks, the police, to go and look for the items? I told you what has happened. And I told you there are disciplinary proceedings against the officer. So what is it that exactly that you're looking for? And I'll be prepared to recommend to Cabinet to hold a Commission of Inquiry. Mr. Leong, please be specific in your responses. Okay. Okay, Minister, I think um, um, one uh, um, issue, for example, after listening to your uh, 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 statement, um, specifically, I was thinking, like, for example, you mentioned about the police uh, having taken five weeks to, uh, to, to attend to the uh, uh, evidence, and then you say that, uh, um, yeah, the, 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 there are some lapses, but nevertheless, the manpower situation is very tight. I, I think that's my interpretation. I may be wrong. Huh? So to me is that if, even if the manpower situation is tight, do they need five weeks to, to, to attend to the evidence, for example? So I'm quoting this, I think, as an example, uh, uh, because I think there are many aspects, as I say just now, that need further investigation so that we can come up with a whole integrated and overall uh, systemic uh, uh, look at the whole systemic aspects of, of uh, uh, the criminal justice process so that we can come up with a better solution. That's the reason why I, uh, I uh, have recommended that we have an independent inquiry. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Leong, if it is the five weeks, I told you, I said to the House, there is no excuse for the five weeks. I said there is no excuse. But I asked for an explanation. The police do not in any way seek to defend it, but we gave an explanation. I said there are manpower issues, but that's not an excuse. And the officer is facing disciplinary proceedings. 
So what is it about the five weeks that concerns you? Is it that he was unfairly influenced? Is it something else? I mean, he shouldn't have taken that length of time. He will be disciplined. His reasonings will be gone into, and he'll be dealt with. If it is a five weeks, I'm not prepared to recommend a commission of inquiry for that purpose, because the question you ask doesn't make sense to me. Is there any other issue that you are concerned about? OK, if, uh, Minister, thank you for your uh, question. If that is the case for the five weeks, then we, 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 uh, we take it as that. For the, uh, another aspect, for example, you have been talking about, uh, uh, you have been trying to interpret uh, LML's behavior and his family's behavior, for example. That interpretation could also be further uh, sort of investigated and uh, analyzed. Okay? For example, in terms of the uh, uh, maid's behavior, uh, it is quite, um, for example, in, it is quite common that uh, when, we, when we have the maid at home, we do actually have some, um, some leeway la, for her to do certain things, okay? To the extent that sometimes he takes something, you know, we... we, we Mr. Leong, we can call an inquiry into any issue. So what specifically, you have been asked, what specific issues do you have that warrants asking for this com so commission? So may I, may I intervene? Uh, Please do. Okay. Uh, Mr. Leong. Yes. How may, I've said there are 250,000 foreign domestic workers and about 200,000 families. How they interact with each other cannot be the subject of a government commission of inquiry. The government commission of inquiry has got to look at government institutions and organs. I have talked about the motive issue. I've explained why it's not to cast doubt on anything, but to say we had to investigate because the High Court made some observations. As a result, we made the investigation. Now I have the information in my hand. I have no choice, but in duty of frankness, I've got to put it to this house. But I explained what was the evidence that AGC and police had, and whether members felt prima facie, you know, that was, you know, so that members understood what was the prima facie evidence that police and AGC had. It is legally not possible to hold a commission of inquiry to look into the conduct of employers and maids. That's not the business of commissions of inquiry. Yes, Minister, I understand that, but at the same time, you have an interpretation of the motive, okay? And you have the benefit of having new information. No, the interpretation of motive has got nothing to do with the government, government organs. I just explained why that was put forward. It's got nothing to do with how the police proceeded. It's got nothing to do with how AGC proceeded. It is something that has come out in the course of the investigations, subsequent investigations. How is that a subject matter of a commission of inquiry? Yeah, but then when the information, when there's new information, okay, coupled with the information that came out of the court uh, process, don't we have to get to the bottom of it? You have no, provided one interpretation. The High Court has acquitted Ms. Liani. That's final. This House is now dealing with whether there was any improper influence exerted on AGC or police. I've given you the facts. I've given you categorical confirmations as to at which level this was handled. I've also said as a result of the High Court's comments, the investigations, some facts came out which we are disclosing to you. I've also said later this evening an announcement will be made as to what are the next steps to be taken as a result of those investigations. I am not prepared to recommend a commission of inquiry to look into this issue of motive. It cannot properly be the object of a commission of inquiry. Okay, Minister, I think uh, what I'm trying to uh, uh, drive at is that the, the whole case probably requires more uh, uh, investigation, okay, and uh, uh, interpretation of the facts. So, but if you think that that is enough, then I will withdraw my, uh, 
a proposition or recommendation for an independent inquiry. Thank you. I have to say, Mr. Leong, it is not right to come here and say, I think that a commission of inquiry is necessary. I cannot tell you why. I cannot tell you what my concerns are. I cannot pinpoint anything. I make no allegations. But in general, you know, it's good to have a commission of inquiry. Commissions of inquiry don't proceed that way. Let me put it on record. I have no problem recommending such a commission of inquiry. Obviously, I'm not saying this without having consulted with my cabinet colleagues. Cabinet will be prepared to recommend a commission of inquiry. We have nothing to hide. We're completely transparent about this issue. But it's not in law, they will say, macabreism. It's not because something strikes your mind and suddenly you get this idea that we have commissions of inquiry. You have had of several weeks now since the High Court judgment. If there is something specific, put it down, we will hold a commission of inquiry. So far, I have heard nothing. Okay, thank you, uh, Minister. Mr. Pritam Singh wants to. Yes. Would you like to address Mr. Pritam Singh? Pardon? Uh, not quite. I thought you wanted to take part in the. <laughs> I'm always happy to hear from you, Mr. Singh. Sir, I had intended to say that I'm prepared to recommend to Cabinet to hold a Commission of Inquiry if the member stands by his views, despite what he has heard today, and provided he will come to the commission and repeat those allegations. But uh, so far we have heard nothing that, that uh, I can rationally put together to justify a commission of inquiry. So I will leave it at that. I think I've answered all the members' questions.